And the first factor is our perception, Push it, putting a posh bullshit psychological term on that, exteroception, the perception of the external world. The sec in other words, if, you know, if there are blue mountains slowly erupting from the corner of the room and moving towards me, I think I'm probably in an altered state, you know, unless it's the big one in California. Then there is interoception. How does my body feel? Do I feel a lot of energy moving around in myself, etc.? Then there's input processing. It's what is the high priority thing to see versus the non-high priority. And one of the fascinating things about psychedelics is that it screws up input processing so that the priorities are no longer normal. And so instead of realizing that giving the lecture is the fascinating thing, I might be absolutely fascinated by the light on the control for the slide projector <laughs> and forget to give the lecture at all. This is a wonderful example of how my input processing priorities will make a big difference to how I behave in front of you folks. Of course, I may also have changes in my emotions. And of course, teenagers love getting drunk because it makes them feel indestructible and able to be bonsai warriors, which, of course, is a wonderful stage to be in if, if you're feeling depressed and suppressed. It will make a difference to memory. What did I say? Because often in different altered states of consciousness, memory performs in different ways. I may also have a time sense. One of the great things about the concept of flow, which was established by uh, a very brilliant uh, Chicago psychologist, the idea of flow is that flow is the state you get into when you're exercising your real competence with something you love. You're in flow, time passes in a flash because it's so beautiful, just like this amazing lecture that you're hearing. You didn't know it was 10 minutes after I said I'd stop. Um, that is supposed to be a joke. I don't know how that... That's leakage. I don't know how, how that got in at all. And then there's the sense of identity. Who am I? That's a very fascinating question to ask. One of the classical ways of getting an out-of-body experience is to keep asking the question, who am I, while looking at a mirror? And you go through the different levels of what your identity is, and you float up because I am not my mind, I am not my body, I am not my system, I am not ilioprigio gene and you kind of go out of the system. And then we have our evaluation and cognitive processing, which will change in altered states. And of course, our bodily interactions, our motor output will change, and our interaction with the environment will change. Then I think the final point that I want to make is that we stand at a very exciting crossroads because it's very clear that more sophisticated technology will come along that probably we're going to wind up with highly sophisticated, very expensive biofeedback technology that's going to be able to get us into extraordinary states. But what we've been missing up until now is this, we've had the hardware, we haven't had the software. What we haven't had is so much attention devoted to, except by the Monroe Institute and one or two other notable exceptions, is how do we get to an altered state? How do we educate the person to get into that state? And what things can they do in those states? Because those are the interesting questions. And what I foresee for our industry is an extremely fascinating future where we actually start really to recover some of the knowledge that some of the Asian uh, spiritual uh, disciplines have already known for thousands of years and also that we recover our own inner identity. And I don't want us to separate from our own inner identity because essentially, if we're going to try and save this planet or, or be part of that process, we need to shift away from an identity of disconnectedness. And this is really what interested me in psychokinesis, that psychokinesis shows the interface between quantum physics and consciousness. And we are living in a world where the interface between consciousness and the physical reality has started to drill holes in the ozone layer and pollute uh, seriously. And so what we've got to do is to shift the consciousness. We are part of that consciousness shift. I want us to become self-aware that we are indeed so. And what's happening here is going to determine a lot of what happens in the rest of the world because America sets the trend and the rest of the world to a large extent follows, and this is already happening. So we're in a very exciting position where some of the choices that we make, some of the creative products that we may produce, can substantially shift the consciousness of the planet. And that, with that suitably cosmic thought, I think I'll end. Thank you.